smoker's jacket. I didn't wear my pin. They're going to kill me. All right. I'm your host, Adam Jump, and we have a great show lined up for you today. So let's see what we have in store. First, we're going to talk about what we have on the calendar for the Merrimack Lions Club coming up in the next few months as we roll into the spring uh, calendar. Uh, also, we're going to introduce our special guest, Mike Sills. He won the Chili Championship for the 2021 Virtual Chili Cook-Off under the Lions Club category. So we're gonna to talk to him, he's gonna talk about his chili and his experience overall with the first virtual contest. Uh, and then next we're gonna go right into um, what we have coming up, where you can donate, how you can donate, um, and give out all that good information. So first coming up for the Lions Club, I want to give a shout out to the Merrimack Lioness Club. They're collecting used and worn shoes right now. And Mike, that's going to go to third world countries. Uh, they're working with the recycling group here in Merrimack to repurpose these shoes mm. and ship them out. And um, they're collecting this throughout the month of March. You can uh, find the drop box at Merrimack Post Office. And it's also going to be at 15 Sarah Drive in the Breezeway. That's one of the members' locations. Uh, they also have a drop box there if you feel more comfortable leaving it uh, at their house. So, again, collecting uh, used and worn shoes, sneakers only. Um, doesn't matter the condition. Send it in to um, the post office drop box and help support the Merrimack Lioness. And... Um, Next on our calendar, we're very excited to announce our casino night, Mike, at the National River Casino. Uh, this has been a big fun fundraiser the last few years for the club, especially uh, during the times of the pandemic. We've been able to go into those funds uh, since um, finding charity events have been tough lately, as you know. Um, so what we're going to do is April 1st through the 10th, the, they're open. Um, their time of business, they're open. You come down. Have a little fun with your friends, gamble a little bit, socialize, meet a couple of the members. You want to meet me in person, I'll be down there every night, the 1st through the 10th. Come say hello, introduce yourself to Adam Jump. Find out a little bit more about the Lions Club, because we are looking for new and younger members to join our club. Um, it's definitely something we need. Um, so come find out more information April 1st through the 10th at the National River mm -hmm. Casino. Um, also, Mike, 275 years. Merrimack is celebrating their birthday, 275 years, April 2nd. <laughs> I know. Can you believe it? So mm -hmm. April 2nd, we'll be down at National River Casino. Come celebrate mm -hmm. with us. Roll the dice, you know? The cake's free. The cake's right? free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on us. So come on down, celebrate Merrimack's 275-year anniversary Friday. Um, that's going to be April 2nd with the Merrimack Lions at the National River Casino. Um, and then April 3rd, we have our blood drive. Uh, we did one just a few months back before the Christmas holiday season, and um, we raised about 35 pints of blood. Oh. And um, the Red Cross was extremely thankful for the showing and the support of the Merrimack community. So I challenged them two episodes ago to get 45 pints this time around. So we're going to push the envelope. We're going to get more blood in so we can get more blood out to the people who need it. Um, so again, that's going to be... April 3rd at Wasserman Park at their function hall between the hours of 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. Again, Lions Club's going to be there. Come uh, show your support, donate some blood, chat it up with the Lions Club members, and then you can always join us later that night at the National River Casino and have some more fun throughout the day. So that's uh, what we got lined up coming the next uh, two months here on the calendar. So I'd love to introduce our guest right here. Uh, Bedford Lions Club, member since 1976 of 42 years of service, Mike Sills, the 2021 Virtual Chili Championship. Mike, happy to have you on the show. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Um, now, as we all know, this was a first-time experience for everybody. Um, so Virtually, yeah. Virtually. So tell us uh, how your experience was. Just on the virtual end, uh, and you know, we're all on these Zoom type conferences. Yeah. You're not thinking anything contacty, but the actual contest had enough, you know, Lions Club members, uh, chefs that were judges, other people that it, it felt normal. It, it felt did. like it was an active, a human being live affair. It did. And now we're just hoping that the virtual part will kick in some funds because, as I think Adam's already mentioned, all of our activities are either labor intensive or money intensive. We haven't been able to, to get out there and do what we normally have, and it's in the middle of a pandemic. So things are pretty tough. Yeah. In terms of our club, we have a, a, 
normal pancake breakfast, uh, things like that, but we haven't been able to have them. A casino trip, we haven't been able to have them. But we do have an ongoing program called Crutches for Haiti that started with the earthquake in Haiti. Mm. And what we found out is, through my wife's accident, there's no way to rehabilitate these third world countries once they have usually an earthquake. Right. If you have an earthquake, you're either going to lose an arm or a leg or you're going to die. Wow. So we started collecting crutches and walkers and wheelchairs. Then we collected everything because people really don't have much of a use for these things after the fact. Right. And most of the orthopedic doctors are suggesting, uh, why don't you keep them in case you need it? What's like, what's that mean? Right. And now they're saying, well, you can donate it to the Lions Club. So if you have uh, up to a bed, you know, that you'd like to consider donating, just call me. Uh, I'm on the website. My name is Mike Sills. 472-5516, and I'll screen your donation, see what it is, and give you a place to drop them off. We usually do several thousand worth of crutches a year, and the interesting thing is we almost did all of Ecuador, but usually, wow. and we, we participate with a, a, an AFIA, a nonprofit out of Yonkers, New York, but they usually go to a third world, like the, for the Ebola uh, crisis in Africa, we did right. gloves, because family has to have Gloves on or they'll get it from who's ever sick in their family. Wow. Uh, we're starting to move now to the United States with Puerto Rico's hurricane. Right. And now with the pandemic, our next shipment is going to Louisiana wow. and Mississippi. So we're, we're getting very local now with these donations. So if you consider it, it it's very good. We also, we also have uh, our normal collect clothing uh, and we run a huge uh, food pantry. There's only a couple in, in, the, in New Hampshire. One's yes. in... Uh, well, actually, it's in Massachusetts, in Duxbury, and us. Correct. Uh, and we service both the school kids and, and the families. So that's our background. And we've been participating in the chili contest for a couple of years now. We participate in a few of them because if someone like Merrimack is willing to organize it, right. we all try to get involved because you, the more you have, the more chance you have of collecting money on a, on a uh, basis. But we have no real cost. Right. Except for the advertising, that kind of thing. A lot of the advertising, yeah. When I, so let's. So we get down to the recipes. Get down to the recipes. And I, your I story tell, here is awesome. Tell, tell an Adam in the group. Um, there's four couples moved into town in the '70s from different areas of the country, including North Dakota, South Dakota, uh, and Connecticut, and and we did either environmental work. I did a lot here in Amherst. Right. I mean, in Merrimack. Whoops. Oh yeah. Hey. And. Uh, <laughs> And all Justin the rest were all the rest well. were high tech, <laughs> and there's four of them, four couples, and uh, it comes the uh, Chicago Bears Super Bowl, which you probably don't remember. You weren't even born. Maybe your parents weren't even born, but it was a it was a it was a, a slaughter. The the Bears killed the Patriots by the first quarter, wow. and we had made a lot of food right. for our four little our four little couples, and no one could eat. We were so th disgusted and sick and depressed. So we decided after that we're going to have it every year, but we're only going to ping one one item a piece. And actually, I take chili manos. Skip, who's this is titled after Skip Super Bowl chili, did chili for some reasons I'll explain. And then we had my wife did chicken enchiladas because I was in the army in El Paso, Texas, so mm. she taught in the school systems, and they right. had homemade enchiladas every Thursday. Oh yeah. So she did that, and then we have the salads, and we have the desserts. But Skip and I were both military-oriented culinary arts. I got a job being the uh, uh, mess officer of a, an air defense artillery group. And I never had such a great job. It's supposed to be a secondary job. You kind of make sure that the cooks didn't steal the steak or, or A1 sauce or what have you. But I got involved because I love eating. Oh, yeah. So uh, it got to the point, my real job was to count missiles, make sure we didn't lose any. But I ended up more time down at the mess hall to make sure everything was right and sample every item. Yep. Uh, most of the, my men got, uh, you know, wait, we never see Lieutenant Sills anymore. So they got me a desk plaque that says, Mike won't let his men eat anything that he won't eat twice. Now, I don't know how to take that, but they thought it was pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, but I more or less represent the, the Army version of food, institutionalized military food, and it's actually pretty good. People don't visualize it like that. But during Vietnam, during the 60s, we were just bringing hamburgers and hot dogs and french fries in, and the men thought we were gods, wow. to tell you the truth. So what I brought as my example of my background in cooking was the, uh, the Army Field Manual used in World War II. 
Korea and Vietnam, and to this day, this is for an infant kitchen or uh, oh, yeah. that or can you get that, up. Justin? Yeah. Or a uh, an infield tent. You see them in the movies a lot where they're eating in the field, and uh, the it's usually a recipe for sixty men. And is that doing all right, Justin? Do you have it? Yep. He said I guess that's so. A good, got a um, you'll see that I, I've left you uh, chicken fricassee, which is. You know, chicken you're a professional what? chef, chicken fricassee. Hey. And uh, one, the chili recipe is on the right, and it's very crude. It's four or five items. But I thought it was, I liked all the meals. I kind of like sea rations, too, out of a can. But, mm -hmm. you know, I thought the Army food was very good. Now, Skip, the other veteran, was in the Coast Guard. And I found out through my environmental work overnight in the North Atlantic that the Coast Guard ate like kings. They eat better than cruise ships. Wow. And no one really knows this. I mean, they have, uh, I can still remember a wine and pork dish. We had sticky buns for coffee break. You don't get sticky buns, but once every three years in your own life, right? Yeah. And then at night, they would all have a big cribbage game and have stromboli as a snack. Wow, okay. So I said, gee, Skip. He goes, yeah, we're, we're pretty great. And so I didn't have their book, so I had to find a cruise ship that, um, I kind of think I found a cruise ship that had a lunch menu that had things that coast, the Coast Guard would have, depending on where they are. They'd even have, they'd even have caviar if they were the cutter out near Alaska, near the Russians. They would swap things out. And so I got the, uh, for the group, I got the uh, luncheon menu for the Titanic on the day it was sunk. It's kind of a, a sad idea, but it's a collector's item that I kept. And so I get to use that as the example of the kind of level the Coast Guard is at in terms of the quality of their food. So a l little bit known to everybody, Skip and I got together on a chili recipe. And he'd been doing this since the Bears killed the Patriots and before uh, in the Coast Guard. And so uh, um, it, it represents a chili that four of us and a couple other couples ate for over 40 years, and we'd always take something home. Yeah. Actually, after the contest the other night, they all asked, what's left over? And I made a drop-off last night of chili to the various couples that were involved, because it really is pretty dang good chili, I'll tell you that. I think some of the judges were some very judges, kind. Yeah, one judge, uh, Dan DeCorsi, he said, when, when I think, think of, of chili, chili, this is exactly what I picture. <laughs> this is what I want. But, uh, uh, yeah. And we've been doing it for 40 years. Yeah. Now, there's, there's some things about it that, that I think are important. I can't give you the whole recipe because we're trying to look at purchasing. Oh, yeah. But, uh, we'll and I've, I've made minutes. this from time to time, yep. but not like the real Skip's chili. And what you do is instead of buying hamburger to make the chili with, you buy a whole chuck roast. It's the same price. And if you have the butcher, we'll grind it for you. Market Basket's one that'll grind it for you. You grind the whole chuck roast, which is the best, the best part of the meat. Uh, and, and then moving on, uh, he only uses certain beans. I like kidney beans, but he's convinced me, you know, you need the steward bean, which is a very light-skinned pinto bean or a pinto bean. Right. And that's light-skinned, cooks up easily, easy to digest. Mm -hmm. And then came the tomatoes. And we've all used, I tend to use those 14-ounce cans of diced flavored tomatoes. Yeah. You can get them for anything. Yep. And uh, as it turns out, Skip insists on the Pasteur uh, version, the, the big, the, what is it, 32-ounce, 28-ounce cans of whole tomatoes, and you dice them up on a board without getting too wet and dump everything into the mix. But uh, as a sidebar, uh, the Italians in our family, my daughter-in-law and friends, all have their own family marinara sauce. Now, for those that aren't Italians, there's only six or five or six ingredients in marinara sauce. Mm -hmm. But every single family has a different recipe for those five or six ingredients. <laughs> but they all use pastine or equivalent foreign tomatoes whole chopped up. Yeah. And one year, uh, Skip made it trying to save time with the chopped up version already flavored. And his wife kind of ended that. And he says, uh, as she said, quite frankly, uh, this isn't the same. And so he never used it again. So right. stick with the, the whole tomatoes, pastern or equivalent, uh, you know, imported, chopped up. Um, 
we get down to the other normal ingredients that you'll see are in most things, but there's like eight of them. And he adds eight or nine different uh, 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 spices. And at the end, uh, I think most of you that make chili know you don't put the beans in until like a half hour before it's done because you don't want to overcook them. Mm -hmm. Well, you do that 30 minutes before, fine. But then before you serve it, like five minutes before you serve it, you put two tablespoons of a cider vinegar in. Uh -huh. And believe me, that makes a big difference. Okay. And it's, you know, I got a five quart recipe here. Easy to gear down to two or three quarts if you want uh, on the bargain. But those are the, those are the highlights. Oh, one other thing. And this, I think you, you saved me on this, uh, Adam. A lot of the contests we were in or a lot of the, the expert chefs that make chili think that adding bacon is a sin, mm -hmm. you know. We think it's the greatest thing since potato chips because oh, yeah. you can't have enough of either one, right? Yeah, I agree. So uh, we add bacon and a lot of it, a lot of it fried and crispy and, and patered in. And don't listen to those other people. You know, bacon is great in chili. You, you add it in first. So that was our, uh, the highlights and uh, the, the lowlights of our military career. I did gain, I only got to gain weight during a war, you know, and, but it, I think, I hope, I think when you look at this, this one recipe goes back to the Battle of the Bulge, actually. Wow. For chicken fricassee. It's, you're a professional. It's a pretty good recipe for Very chicken good recipe. And everyone loved it. We looked it over. The chefs looked yeah. it over and talked about it. And uh, what I loved is you showed them the Titanic menu and you said, hey, I thought this might inspire you to put something on your own menus. Yeah, before <laughs> it goes it. down. Right, yeah, right. It was great, yeah. you know. So if, if you like Mike's story, and if you want to try this chili at home in your kitchen, what you can do is you can go on our website and you can click the donate button and then you can purchase uh, for a slight donation of $5 for five recipes. You can get a $10 donation for 10 recipes. We're going to include all the recipes that were in the event, all recipes of past winners of the past few events and restaurants that participated but couldn't make it that, that day. Uh, we had all the restaurants, unfortunately, back out of the category. Uh, and that was obviously due to staffing issues, you know, when it and comes to the windstorm. And yeah. the windstorm knocked out power of one that they had to take care of a family instead. So um, it is tough to staff right now. If they're shorthanded, management, salary, they're staying, they're working the long hours to get the operation to keep yeah, the money coming in. in. So it's completely understandable, no hard feelings. We still love to shout them out. So we're going to go with a special thank you to the Tomahawks uh, Tavern and Butchery here in Merrimack, the Common Man of Merrimack, the Alamo of Brookline, New Hampshire, and also uh, Bobby and Jack's Memphis, Tennessee Barbecue out of Tewksbury, Mass. And can't forget defending restaurant champ last year, the Smokehouse out of Amherst. Hurst. Uh, they took it down, but they all couldn't make it due to their own reasons, which is completely understandable. So we're hopefully having another soup contest in the fall, and uh, we like to see them all there, including yourself, Mike. Um, so like I said, you can go on uh, the website. It's www.e-clubhouse.org slash sites slash Amherst, New Hampshire. And you go to that website, and you click on the Donate button, and you're going to find all the detailed information about every recipe in the specific number. So when you watch the virtual uh, chili cook-off, we're in the process of editing it right mm -hmm. now. Special thanks to Merrimack TV for loaning out their equipment in their um, studio for us to do it on our own time. You know, they can't help us, but they can only guide us and point us in direction. So it's an experience on an end that I've never dealt with and I'm yeah, learning yeah. and rolling with it and I'm having a hell of a time. So uh, I think we're going to put out a great product that visually and um, it's going to appeal to the masses and, and go out there and hit the social media platforms and take off and hopefully draw in money for the Lions Sight and Hair yeah. Foundation because that's what it's really all about, supporting the Lions Sight and Hair Foundation of New Hampshire. Uh, we uh, uh, help out anyone who needs uh, hearing aids and can't afford to get the procedure or the appointment or if they need special frames. I know just recently yeah. in the past few months a lady had uh, a special thick frames that she couldn't afford so we chipped in and helped her get those frames, and uh, she was very thankful. Mm. And so it's, it's great stories like this that you can be a part of by donating. And again, if you like uh, Skip's Chili, that's chili number 13 on that donation yeah, list. I, I should say this. 
I was the Chile Arena specialty on the 40 something year super fun Super Bowl group, but I took the recipe to make from Skip's the whole the full meal deal to show that a normal person, not Skip, could make it. Right. And it does work. And the other thing is you, many people may know this already, but you should serve it the next day. Oh, Give yeah. it a night overnight in the in the refrigerator yeah. uh, uh, to do that in. We uh, um, we also have, uh, by the way, uh, an eye screening for kids uh, yes. uh, with a special machine uh, now. I don't know if you've ever seen it. I have not seen it, um, but I've heard great things about it. It's unbelievably yes. cool. Uh, and every everybody in our zone chipped in, and, yep. and we have that. So if you have kids, we like to get them, at least the docs like to get them checked before they're five or six years old. Correct. That's another major program Huge. of sight and hearing. Absolutely. Great, great way to throw that in there. Yeah. Um, and also, again, I want to highlight the individual champion since he couldn't come on the show because uh, we have to social distance, could only have one guest. But congratulations to Brian Foster. He won the individual category with his special lamb chili. The judges were blown away by the flavor and depth mm. that he got with the texture of the lamb. Uh, so shout out to Brian Foster. If you want to know his recipe and how he cooked the lamb and incorporated it in his chili, he's going to be chili number three on the donation list. So when you go on the website, again, that's going to be right here below. It will pop up on screen. And I'll say one more time, www.e-clubhouse.org slash sites slash Amherst, New Hampshire. And that's where you can donate and get some of the recipes you want. You can get Merrimack's recipe, Bedford's recipe, or everyone's recipe. And just have one hell of a soup contest, Super Bowl all year yeah. kind of round party. Yeah. You got something for every every day of the every day of the year there. So um, with that said, Mike, I think what I want to do next is kind of we got four minutes left. Um, I told Merrimack Parks and Recreation I want to extend the invitation and see what you do. I'm going to throw you a curveball next weekend. It's our chilly 6K run for the town of Merrimack Park and Recreation. So I told him I'd offer the winners of the the contest to enter a larger batch of chili and and you can bring your sign and represent Bedford Lions Club and the people running in the event and all of the uh, people supporting the people in the event are going to sample your chili. And it's just a great way to be out there in the community. Do you have a place to keep it warm? We have a place to keep it warm, yeah. And they're going to set us up. And I'll have more detailed information. But if this is something that interests you, I'll send you some information. But Merrimack will be there with their special chili that I'm going to cook up fresh Friday let it sit overnight and bring it there that Saturday. So oh, so it's going to be Merrimack Bedford again? Not again. Head on head. Not, Reminds not me of the Chicago Bears. I'm getting nervous already. And you're the Patriots, right? Yeah. Well, no. Now, you know, I hate to say this, but now we have Patriots light. That's true. Patriots you know, the Buccaneers. <laughs> Patriots Brings light. his own receivers with him. All right. I'm going to use these next few minutes just to say my thank yous to sure. everyone here. Um, so special thank you to all the judges, the three judges, Jay Smith, executive chef of the Copper Door. We have uh, co-founder and uh, culinary director of Cracked um, Kitchen and Coffee, some of the highest quality uh, egg breakfast sandwiches around, Cracked, Alan Fratty and Danny Azzarello. Thank them so much. Uh, Danny Azzarello was behind one of the cameras there. He did yeah, a phenomenal so, yeah. job. So thank you to Crack Kitchen and Coffee. Alan and uh, Danny, thank you very much. And finally, up in your grills, pitmaster Dan DeCourcy, Gee. local to Merrimack. Uh, big thank you to him. I want to thank you to all the volunteers, all the contestants who donated their time, time. to come out there and participate in an event un yeah. unlike no other. Um, definitely a first-time experience. And I also want to thank all the members that donated their time. We had eight, nine, ten members between the yeah, two sure. clubs uh, that donated their time over the past month and a half, working hard, making phone calls, sending emails. I tell you, the team effort, and this is what I love about the Lions, if you love team-oriented community service, you need to be a Lions member. Some of the best teamwork ever. When, when it's time to get it done, Lions come together. And we know it lasts over 40 years. That is Half correct. of our little crowd was in the Bedford Lions Club, by the way. That is very true. And li like I said, Lions Clubs all around are looking for younger and newer members to join the club. And if you're interested and you're in the town of Merrimack, the next few months are going to be at a discounted rate. Uh, dues will be dropped for $33. Right. Uh, 
uh, come this month, and I think it goes down to somewhere about 31 and then $29 as we get closer to July. So every month it drops down a few dollars. So if you don't want to pay the $75 dues and you want to get a little discount and find out what it's like to be a lion for a year, please come on down, reach out on Facebook, uh, reach out on my YouTube page, leave me a comment. I'll be more than happy to talk you through and come talk to you in person if need be. Um, and most importantly, I want to thank Merrimack TV again, giving us the time, the space, yeah. the equipment to do shows like this, yes. to get out to a new broader audience, because that's what it's about. Reaching the community, those people who don't get a chance to get out and see the Lions in action, yeah. they get to at least watch and kind of be there as a part of it um, for those who can't necessarily get out and be involved. Uh, Mike, we got a, just a few seconds left. Anything else you want to say before we close it out? Uh, no, go Patriots. Go Patriots, uh, go Bruins. How about that? Go Bruins, Bees. yeah. Never, Red know? Sox. Uh, All that. Celtics. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, to a 2021, everyone stay healthy, you know, and uh, go out there and take care of your loved ones. Uh, as we like to say here at the Lions Club, we're not above you, we're not beneath you, but we're with you. Thank you for joining me on this episode. I'm your host, Adam Jump. Until next time, we're keeping the quality high. Thank you.